Yeah, it is a very, very cool looking fish to use for a bait, eh? I love that yellow streak down the back. There you go, Mr. Kelly. This lateral line fishing mission all started because of a couple of successful scouting trips, if you want to call them that. Hamish from NACL Lures obviously loves topwater fishing and he headed out wide to see if the fish had turned up. Right now it is springtime in New Zealand and springtime sees with it a run of springtime kingfish. And for whatever reason, springtime is a great time to be casting topwater lures. Kingfish just seem to be a little bit more eager to smash a lure off the surface at this time of year. Not only were the boys treated to an amazing weather forecast, but they also got an awesome display of nature on the way out. And Hamish took a fair chunk of time out of their fishing day and he managed to capture some amazing shots. On that particular scouting mission, it wasn't just Hamish. Hamish had on board with him Richie from HPA and that day was also the very same day that building brother Andre and his son Jai took Milan on a fishing mission and they went out there to test the waters also. It was Hamish and Richie that managed to find the fish first. They um, put hooks in a few, landed a few, had a bit of fun and then of course Rung Milan, Andre and Jai let them know where all the action was and then yeah, all the boys got in on the action. There was smiles all around, some awesome fish landed. Not only were kingfish falling victim to well-worked topwater lures, but the boys also came across a big school of Koheru, caught a few of those and dropped them down deep and they managed to drag some bigger kingfish up from the depths. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh. Is it good? Woo! Woo! Oh. Stay down. That's good fishing. That's good fishing. I don't believe that you've had a good kingfish catching session until one of the boys gets dusted. <laughs> Richie was warned, properly warned. Hamish said, Richie, this is a PE8 minimum mission. Don't bring anything smaller. And Richie turned up with PE6. <laughs> but that's how you learn, right? Don't take knives to gunfights or you're gonna end up getting shot. Yeah, here we go. There's the one. Don't let him get the ground. Come on, boy, clamp, clamp down. <laughs> That's good fish. Yeah, man. That's a good fish, all right. <laughs> Well, the success that the boys had that day pretty much signals the start of the spring run of kingfish here in New Zealand. And obviously, Meland and Hamish were super keen to get back out there on the very next weather window. I ended up getting a phone call from Meland late on a Friday night saying, NATO, the weather's mint. Do you want to come with me and Hamish and go chase some kingfish on topwater gear tomorrow morning? Tomorrow being Saturday, and that day I had a permit to be in one of my favorite hunting blocks. But I ended up picking Milan up from his house, 
stupid early in the morning so that we could be at the boat ramp to meet Hamish well before daybreak. Now, not only did Milan have to convince me to go with them because they had a hunting permit, but he also had to convince me to get on board Hamish's boat because it was Hamish's boat that we were going fishing on and make an hour run offshore. Now don't get me wrong, Hamish's boat is awesome. Awesome for what it was designed to do. And in my mind, that's an inshore boat for dropping keen as anglers on and off the rocks. I'm not saying it's not a capable boat, but it's not the sort of boat you want to spend an hour traveling in open water to go fishing because, yeah, you're just gonna get drowned. I fully rugged up. When I say rugged up, I had my wet weather gear from head to toe on. And if I'm honest, it wasn't that bad. Taking everything about Hamish's boat into consideration, it was actually a really enjoyable ride out. I didn't even get that wet. The boys had a pretty simple plan. Obviously there was top water gear on board, but the number one goal was to go and catch a couple of the mighty Koheroos to use as live eats because the biggest live baits, sorry, the biggest kingfish that the boys caught that day were on live baits. So yeah, plan was to turn Hamish's chili bin into a live bait tank put as many co-heroes as we could into that and then go out to this reef and do some deep dropping with live baits but then also fish the top water with lures. And the boys were super, super excited the whole way out. Both Milan and Hamish were like, man, this is gonna be awesome. There's gonna be fish everywhere. It's gonna be on. It's the right time of year. We we're only out there a week ago and it was on. We know where the bait is. It's a good tide. We're gonna be out there at first light. Blah, 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 blah. And um, the boys were right. Wow. Bait fish are so big. Oh, did you lose it? Yeah. Oh, gutted. That was a good one, man. Oh, you got another one. <laughs> I might be a big coey. Yeah, it's a, big yeah, it's coey. a massive coey, man. <laughs> Getting smoked. It is a big coey. You get the head back, bounces. First cast. <laughs> Only because I missed the first cast. Yeah. <laughs> first one was a practice anyway. Yeah, yeah. I actually attached hooks on this cast so the first one didn't count. <laughs> it's just teasing them. Milan's bridle rigging up a big co hero. This nice little ball sinker on his nose, mate. Hopefully, it's going to be a hero for us, all right? Livey deployed. Are you taking your stick bait off and putting a live bait on, Hamish? Yeah, man. <laughs> Good on you, mate. This will be the first time I've ever seen the man live baiting. It will be, actually. That's a mean, eh? Haku. Haku. Do the job, mate. Shit, do like what? Good amount of bait down there. 
Yeah. Why are you gonna snap it? Just wasted your livey. But it has hit it, eh? Is that a snapper, you reckon? We're <laughs> about to find out. Come on. Something. Oh, sticks it. Whatever it is, it just got hooked. <laughs> what do you reckon, Milan? That snapper, ain't, it's the that ain't no wheel. snapper, eh? <laughs> Take us off spot one. What is it then? Is it a, it's not a kingy, eh? You'd be running. Sharkfish. Sharkfish? <laughs> well, if it's a kingfish, wouldn't it run? Well, Unless it, it was just real big and he doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Unless it was gut hooked or something. Could be gut hooked. Don't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, why isn't it fighting? It's got plenty of weight. I, want, I just want to see Ming get railed is all. <laughs> Some mate I am. You're the one on the rod, Milan. What do you reckon? You play a kingfish. Is it a 30 comes. kilo fish? I don't think so. Oh, you can see it already? Yeah. yeah. Come on, wake up, Mr. Kingy. Yeah, he hasn't taken any <laughs> He was never asleep, but you know. Oh, how much drag he got on him? Lots. I don't want to get reefed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want you to get reefed either. Oh, well, it was worth getting out of bed early in the morning. Oh, fish. he's good fish, bro. It's real That's solid, bro. Real good fish. It swallowed the hook. It's hooked yeah, deep, eh? He must have on the bait. Oh, that rig works, works best with um. Yeah. Works best with um circle hooks anyway. Oh, if he's gut hooked, we'll take him home. Well, now we've got a bit of a fight out of them. Yeah. <laughs> breakfast is kicking in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't stop laughing whenever you're getting a hiding. Definitely came up from the depths pretty easy, mate. Eh? He came up real easy. I'd say he's hooked deep, though, eh? Yeah. Yeah, he's mucking around with it for a while. I think he ate it and sat on it. Yeah, I think those bridle rigs, you've got to put circle hooks on them as well. Give you more of a chance a big of it. Tail. Yeah, it's a big Good fish, fish though. It's a real big fish. It's hooked in the mouth, man. Is oh, it? It is, it is yeah, it too. Is Wonder why it didn't fight. Well done, me, Len. Bring him around here, bro. I'll give you a lift in. Oh, you just keep nah, you catch another one, man. Yeah. <laughs> you just catch a monster. Milan's supposed to be a professional. Yeah, you, go around, you go around and back up. It's incredible how he just came straight up. Huh? Yeah. I just assumed he was gut hooked or something because he didn't fight. But he's hooked perfectly in the corner of the mouth. <laughs> He's giving you more of a hiding now than he did when you were wheeling him in. Whee! <laughs> oh, nice fish, Milan. There's a. Um... That's a solid fish, bro. Yeah, real solid. I think I'll come up with you. The way slung in the measurement. I'll pick him up. Can't get my shadow off him. <sighs> It was pretty hard to get NATO out of bed at 2.30 this morning. He had a permit to go and hunt deer, and uh, I kind of ruined that for him because I said, we need to go kingy fishing because the kingy fishing's good, and we've got like a four-hour window today to go to Mare Island and catch big kingfish. This morning was pretty hard catching coeys. They weren't really on the, on the bite. Nothing's really on the bite this morning, but the fish are here. They're ready to be caught. Spring kingfish can't beat them. They're just big tubbies. Got lots of fat in the belly. It's a good one. <laughs> Check out his hole in the back of him. Hole in the back of him? Oh, wow. Check out how it moves. Is that a cookie cutter? It's just Look like at that. A moving. Fresh one too, Look eh? at that. What a wound. Alrighty, man. 
Let them rip. I'm going to go catch your grandfather. <laughs> Look at the size of these baits. Can I have a good look at your bait before you actually stick it out? They're the most beautiful looking baits in the world. Yeah, it is a very, very cool looking fish to use for a bait, eh? I love that yellow streak down the back. There you go, Mr. Cully. The old bucket trick. Water out and water in. <laughs> Was that a bite, Hamish? What's going on, man? I heard, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the man's not talking. He's not talking. <laughs> Is this good or a bad thing? Now, Milan looks poised. Oh, yep. <laughs> not happy. What's going on, man? There's kingies down there, eh? Yeah. If both live baits are going crazy at both at the same time. Oh, I was going to say, man, give me some warning, man. I just felt missed the strike of the century, man. <laughs> that was a 30 kilo fish. Yeah. 40 kilo fish today, Hamish. Oh, oh, oh. That's a bite, eh? It's got to be, isn't yeah, it? It's got to be. He's whacking it. He just hasn't. He's just hasn't. He's committing to taking it. Yeah. Kingfish are pretty good at playing with their food at times, eh? Yeah. Hey. I missed it. Hey. I missed that man. Yeah, I don't think it's big, bro. It'd be like that. I still want to film the action, man. It's a fish. It's a kingfish. It's probably like a forty kilo. You're like, no, it's not that. Well, I just get hit. Now Meland's been hit. Hamish is hit. Meland's about to come up tight. No. Should have come up tight. Should have come up tight. What's going on, Hamish? Is it a good one? Oh, what was that? Hey, no! Oh. What? Well, is he got? He's got a fish now. I got something, mate. Something? Yeah. Mainland took something. What did you? What happened? Did you, you pull the hook? You got sharked. Was it a shark? Yeah. Hamish has Cut come through. up with no hook. Cut through. Or the bottom. Nah, whoa, whoa, whoa! Now we got a kingfish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you stop him, Mainland. That's a good fish. That's a better one, eh? Either that or it's one like the other one, but this one's choosing to fight. <laughs> oh, that sounded much better. Milan's not saying much. That's it's always a good thing. Tailing deep. <laughs> Can't move this one as easy as the last one, Hamish. You reckon that one's got more weight than the last one? Fighting a hell of a lot better. Yeah. The last one just swam up so high. Yeah, but you know what it's like. You catch two fish the same size, one fight like crazy, yeah. and the other one did what the last one did and just admitted defeat. Must have known you were going to let him go. You think it was a shark or you trace? Oh, it's cut through. He, he ate it funny, too, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it was a shark. I oh, see. So you reckon it was a shark that ate it, not a shark that hit your. Yeah, no, a shark ate it. You hooked the shark. The sh I hooked the shark. You can see it in the trace. Well, that's unlucky if milan has got another kingfish. Just that same size fish, hey? Yeah. Even smaller. Yeah. I'm not complaining, though, Nate. No, I wouldn't imagine that you are. We'd almost have to kick him off the rod now, wouldn't we, Hamish? It's good because Hamish is a lot. Hamish is a stick baiter. What a day to be catching them. Yeah, well, this is the second trip in a row now that we've got good weather. Definitely loving the good weather. Nice work, Hamish. Yeah. Shocker, eh? Hello, Mr. Kingfish. How are you? <laughs> Milan goes and does it again. Should we eat that one? I'd like to eat that one. Okay. Nice work, Milan. He looks real tasty, mate. I don't have a lot to do now because Hamish is going to steal the last live bait. Oh, wow. It's only fair, isn't it? It is fair. He did get a bit unlucky with Mr. Shark. Thinking about it, <laughs> we actually didn't bring a chili bin to put any fish in to take home in the car, so... 
Because you converted it to our lifeboat tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so lucky for you, Mr. Kingfish, because you look real tasty, mate. This whole not bringing ice and not being prepared thing, getting a little bit old, mate. Well, I was in your truck, man. I just didn't think about it. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> it's a beautiful looking bait, mate. I'd eat it. <laughs> I'd eat it too. We probably should be taking I'll some of them sure, out. Hey, this is so tasty. Yeah, sashimi. I was hoping to look in the lifeboat tank and there was one more. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest. <laughs> yeah, imagine if he did. Hey, whose life base is this one? Yeah. What do you mean? After not really wanting to go on that fishing mission, namely because I had a hunting permit, and secondly because I didn't really fancy getting drowned in Hamish's boat for an hour on the way out and the way back in, I'm super glad that I went. I had an awesome, awesome day filming the boys do what they do, and yeah, amazing weather. Great company, the fishing was good. We only got that sort of hour of bite time when we first got there in the morning and then after that, it kinda quietened right down. But yeah, any day that you can catch a solid kingfish is a really, really good day in my mind. Although I was quietly hoping to film Hamish, hook, fight, and land a big kingfish, because with all of the fishing, filming, fishing missions that we've been on, I am yet to film Hamish with a big kingfish. We were talking about it on the way back in that day, and Hamish is like, what's up with that, man? Am I like jinxed or something? And I'm like, dude, it's the camera jinx. And yeah, we were laughing about it on the way back in. I'm sure one day soon, Hamish will break his jinx and get his fish. So with all that being said, that is going to be the end of this video. Cheer, cheer, my brothers and sisters. Thank you all so very, very much for watching The Lateral Line. If you weren't watching The Lateral Line, there's no way that Milan would have been able to convince me to give up a hunting permit and go out there that day and go fishing. And once again, I am super glad that I did. And that is all thanks to you. Chur chur. And now for a little update from Sam at Hybrid Street on the Toyota Land Cruiser 105 series. The boys are about to put a motor together to stick into this machine. And it is what Sam is calling a hybrid engine. So it is two completely different engines. One engine makes up the bottom end and that's a non-turboed engine but it's bulletproof by the sounds of it. And then the top of the motor is off a turboed engine. So um, yeah, it is a hybrid engine as Sam calls it, a 1HZ block and crank. The head is a 1HDT head. And again, this head's come off a turboed motor, which makes it more resistant to cracking than the 1HZ head. Con rods are forged, H-beam 1HDD con rods doesn't actually really mean a lot to me. It'll handle over a thousand newton meters of torque apparently. There is um, a cool set of pistons in it and they are gonna be ceramic coated, which basically just means we can give them a bit more abuse. And um, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff here that's uh, a little bit over my head, if you know what I mean. But all of that cool information will be in the videos that we do specifically on the build. So yeah, keep an eye out for those. Other than that, you're about to watch Milan's next house building video. And um, yeah, see you all again very, very soon. As a build is coming to a close, you have to have your hand on the dial every single day to make sure you make the right decisions all of the time. 
as people are asking you questions about the overall look of the place and you have to make the right decision on the run. For me, I have had a vision in my head and getting it out has been the hard bit, but I think it's going okay. Hamish the plumber is a collector of all things and one thing he's collected was a whole lot of wool carpet and underlay that was going to the tip. He took that carpet home and it has been stored for the last three years until now where he's donated it to me. Its funds are tight and good quality wool carpet is very much going to be appreciated for the house. It'll go with the theme of the house as much as the inside of the house is all being reclaimed. Morrinsville Flooring Extra are installing the carpet and underlay. We got a nice green carpet for upstairs that was a cancelled order and it just so happened to be the colour I was wanting. For the master bedroom we got a big loop pile just to finish the room off perfectly as we wanted it to be a place where you could go and relax and enjoy. With carpet going down you know the house is getting close to completion and Andre was in full noise doing all sorts of different stuff. First up was working out the handrail and all the brackets, getting height sorted and angles right so it felt good when you were making your way up and down from the loft. Next were the brick slips that we were going to use on the splashback. Everything's easy when you know how and Andre managed to get all the tiles and the black grout and all the gaps without making a mess everywhere. I tried helping for about five minutes and managed to get covered in grout. With things charging along it was time for Hamish from Piaco Plumbers to finish off the last of his stuff. He had a huge amount of little things to tidy up and get completed. The hot water cylinder was one. We went with the cylinder due to kids and in the future going to solar to be more self-reliant. After that all the sinks had to be plumbed in. Some were simple, some took more of an effort. The last big job for Hamish was getting the fireplace sorted. In my head this was an easy thing to install but it needed a ton of thought and there was a ton of work that needed to go into making sure that it was right and it worked well so it didn't burn down the house. Everything had to line up as we were drilling holes through finished product but as always the boys worked together and got the job done. I can't say enough great things about the teams of men I have had on site. They come to site every day with a sense of pride and enjoyment over what they do and a happy site makes a great day to be on site. This episode of The Lateral Line is proudly brought to you by the Bowler Triangle, NATO's bow hunting YouTube channel. Without the Bowler Triangle, The Lateral Line would not exist. Hey, you little buckers, what are you doing, man? God, oh, Jesus, you're just going to get shot, man. What are you doing, man? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.